so good afternoon today we will be studying about histology of vascular tissue introduction vascular tissue is an important transport system which transports nutrients oxygen and hormones and etc it includes heart blood vessels lymphatics heart is a muscular pump arteries carry blood from heart to various tissues smallest of them are called as arterioles which open into capillaries capillaries are the area or the vessels where uh, exchange takes place so there is exchange between blood and tissues at the level of capillaries at some places capillaries are replaced by sinusoids veins so from arteries the arterioles capillaries then it enter, enters into the venules which join to form the veins so blood from tissues is carried to the heart by veins basic structure of blood vessels um, it depends on mechanical and metabolic factors so usually there will be three layers tunica intima tunica media and tunica adventitia you can see here this part is the tunica intima where you can see endothelium and subendothelial connective tissue so this is the basement membrane on which endothelium is resting internal elastic m in internal elastic lamina limits uh, tunica intima from tunica media <coughs> and here you can see this is the tunica adventitia external elastic lamina limits tunica media from tunica adventitia you can also see the small blood vessels supplying the blood vessels. These are called vasovasorum. This is a general picture to show you the three layers of the blood vessels, tunica intima, media and adventitia. So this is of large artery. So what is tunica intima? It is the innermost layer. There are three components, endothelium. It is of simple squamous type. Then uh, basal lamina, which is a connective tissue layer on which endothelium rests that is the basement membrane of endothelium then um, subendothelial connective tissue so which is of loose connective type then uh, this tunica intima is limited from uh, tunica media by internal elastic lamina so tunica media earlier we, in the diagram we have seen concentrically arranged smooth muscle cells elastic fibers and reticular fibers you can see here in this diagram so these are concentrically arranged elastic fibers smooth muscles So limited from adventitia by external elastic lamina. Adventitia is the outermost layer of vessel wall. So it contains longitudinally arranged collagen and reticular fibers. So these actually merge with surrounding structures. So by merging like that, they anchor the blood vessels to surrounding structures. So in large vessels, vasovasorum, blood vessel supplying blood vessels and autonomic nerves are present. So some important points about endo endothelium. So these are single layer of flat polygonal cells lining the heart and blood vessels. So don't get confused with simple squamous and polygonal. Polygonal is from the surface view, whereas simple squamous is the sectional view. So shows imaginations on internal and external surface. So adjacent cells linked by tight junctions. And this endothelium rests on basal lamina. So functions, so it makes the interior of the blood vessel smooth. So it maintains structural integrity. It also has selective permeability, forms non-thrombogenic barrier by secreting heparin tissue plasminogen activator, modulates blood flow by secreting vasoconstrictors like endothelin and angiotensin converting enzyme and vasodilators like nitric oxide and prostacyclines. <clears throat> so there are certain special bodies called Babel palate bodies. So these are rod-like inclusions of von Willebrand factor secreted by endothelium for platelet adhesion during vessel wall injury. So antibodies against the von Willebrand factor are used as marker for tumors arising from blood vessels. Endothelium also regulates immune response. It also senses few growth factors, maintains extracellular matrix. So subendothelial connective tissue, also called lamina propria, 
so in capillaries at certain places so this hub endothelial connective tissue is replaced by pericyte uh, this sub endothelial connective tissue is rich in fibrocollagenous matrix fibroblasts and few smooth muscle cells so smooth muscle cells so these are spindle shaped with elongated nuclei they alter vessel lumen size by contraction secretes elastin and collagen and other components of extracellular matrix helps in propagation of pulse so in few mesenchymal cells among them they are multifunctional and replaces damaged endothelium they undergo fatty degeneration and forms athermatous plaques so which is the most important uh, pathological change in atherosclerosis and myocardial ischemia so now coming to the main structure of the vessels what we are going to study so we will be studying three main uh, vessel structures one will be the large size artery that is called elastic artery the other one will be the muscular artery the other one will be the vein so elastic artery it's also called as large size artery it is large conducting vessel so as we studied earlier there are three layers intima media and adventitia so intima in the most layer three components as we described earlier endothelium simple squamous epithelium basal lamina basement membrane of endothelium subendothelial connective tissue loose connective tissue beneath the endothelium it is well developed in elastic artery or large artery limited by internal elastic lamina but this internal elastic lamina is not distinct due to elastic fibers of media so unica media is rich in elastic fibers so that makes internal elastic lamina less prominent in large artery characteristic feature for large artery so the second layer the tunica media thickest of all layers more elastic tissue and less smooth muscle cells elastic tissue is arranged in the form of fenestrated concentric lamellae alternating with smooth muscle cells number of lamellae is proportional to the size of the vessel and age of the individual some collagen fibers also present fibroblasts are absent in hypertension number of elastic lamina increases due to rise in blood pressure limited from adventitia by external elastic lamina so here you can see <coughs> adventitia where it is rich in collagen fibers prevents undue stretching of vessel vasa vasa are present so few examples of large sized artery or elastic artery or aorta and carotid artery you can see here earlier this was the enlarged diagram in the first uh, introduction to the microscopic structure of blood vessels which i have shown here you can see this is the tunica intima endothelium basement uh, membrane of endothelium uh, connective tissue subendothelial connective tissue other lamina propria and you can see this is the internal elastic lamina as it is diagrammatic representation we are able to see it otherwise if you see in these pictures you are unable to differentiate the internal elastic lamina clearly so then you can see this is the tunica media so you can see the large amount of elastic fibers arranged in the form of concentric lamellae and here and there few smooth muscle cells so this is an enlarged view of the microscopic photograph where you can see this entire thing is the media and here you can see this is the endothelium and this is the subendothelial connective tissue medium sized artery otherwise called muscular artery so these are also called as distributing arteries because they can alter the amount of blood flowing in different regions by altering the size of lumen so intima so characteristic feature is internal elastic lamina is more prominent in media so there will be more smooth muscle cells and less elastic fibers adventitia contains collagen fibers fibroblasts and elastic fibers vasa vasorum and nervosa are present relatively thicker than and elastic arteries so that means if you see tunica media and tunica adventitia tunica adventitia in medium sized artery is relatively thicker you can see here so this is the endothelium this is the subendothelial connective tissue you can clearly differentiate the internal elastic lamina here you can see elastic fibers are less whereas but the smooth muscles are more and this is the tunica adventitia you can see here this is the muscular artery photomicrograph so here you can see this is the endothelium so this is the clear internal elastic lamina which is more prominent distinct internal elastic lamina is a characteristic feature of the muscular artery 
so arterioles muscular arterioles 50 to 100 microns in size no internal elastic lamina few layers of smooth muscles seen in media terminal arterioles less than 50 microns smallest of them will be 12 microns in size this size is important muscular arterioles 50 to 100 microns terminal arterioles less than 50 microns the smallest of the arterioles will be 12 microns so from the terminal arterioles the lateral branches which arise they are called as meta arterioles these reach the capillary bed so initial segment of this meta arterioles is surrounded by few smooth muscle cells forming pre-capillary sphincter which regulates blood flow to capillaries so these act as main regulators of peripheral vascular resistance you can see this is an arteriole and this is a venule comparatively see how thin the venule is so capillaries smallest blood vessels 8, micro, 8 microns in diameter so exchange between blood and tissue takes place through capillaries density of capillaries more in tissues with high metabolic rate structure of capillaries again same endothelial cells lining and uh, these are resting on basal lamina Overlying basal lamina, delicate network of reticular fibers and cells are present. Some capillaries have specialized branching cells, as I said earlier, pericytes, which have contractile filaments in cytoplasm. They provide support to capillary wall and control lumen size. You can see here, this is a terminal arteriole, and you can see this is the meta arteriole, where you can see these are the precapillary sphincters. So which will contract and can regulate the amount of blood flowing through the capillaries. So this is a capillary network and there is an additional connection between the arterial and venule that is called as thoroughfare channel. <coughs> so types of capillaries are of three types, continuous, discontinuous and fenestrated. You can see here continuous capillaries. Ends of the endothelial cells fuse and form continuous capillary wall. Exchange takes place through endothelial cell cytoplasm. Located in skin, connective tissue, muscle, lungs and brain. So, remember this line. Ends of endothelial cells fuse and form continuous capillary wall. See here. So, ends of the endothelial cells fuse and form a continuous capillary wall. You can also see a pericyte here. So, next one, discontinuous capillaries. So, these are organ specific, also called as sinusoidal capillaries. Shows gap between adjacent endothelial cells. These are more irregular. They are of larger diameter. So, location spleen, liver and bone marrow. You can see here. So, there is a large gap between the endothelial cells. So, these are called as dis uh, discontinuous capillaries. Otherwise, it's called sinusoidal capillaries. So, now last but not least, fenestrated capillaries. So capillary wall has fenestrations which are closed by thin diaphragm. So this diaphragm might be a thin duct endothelial cell or basal lamella only. So endothelial cell cytoplasm having pores passing through the entire thickness also act as fenestrations. So location renal glomeruli, intestinal villi, endocrine glands and pancreas. You can see here. So this is the uh, diaphragm like pores which gives the capillary wall as fenestrated appearance, fenestrated capillaries. Veins, so basic structure of veins is similar to that of arteries, but comparatively thinner than arteries. Again, the three same layers, tunica, intima, media and adventitia. So, walls are thinner than arteries. Media contains more collagen fibers than arteries. Elastic fibers and smooth muscles are less compared to arteries. Adventitia of veins is thicker than the media in large veins. So clear distinction of three layers cannot be made out in small veins due to predominance of fibrous tissue. Muscle is absent in venous spaces of erectile tissue, veins of cancellous bone, dural venous sinuses, retinal veins and placental veins. You can see here the three layers. This is the tunica intima, this is the endothelium with the basement membrane and this is the subendothelial connective tissue other is called lamina propria and here you can see the tunica media which is comparatively thin when we see in relation to the adventitia so adventitia you can see longitudinally arranged smooth muscle fibers and you can see certain blood vessels see the lumen how collapsed it appears 
Adventitia in large veins has elastic fibers and smooth muscles, especially oriented in longitudinal direction. This arrangement facilitates elongation and shortening of the vena cava with respiration. So collagen fibers in Adventitia, which forms a meshwork and spirals around arteries, also facilitate this action. Since veins are not tortuous but arteries are, so for example, splenic artery and facial artery, these are tortuous. So because spleen moves with movement of diaphragm, so the artery which is supplying it is tortuous and even facial muscles keep on moving so facial artery is also tortuous so valves of veins so why veins need valves in order to facilitate unidirectional blood flow towards heart so made up of two semilunar cusps so what is a cusp it is a fold of endothelium with connected tissue rich in elastic fibers valves are absent in small veins vena cava veins of cranial cavity and vertebral canal Flow of blood through veins is assisted by contraction of the muscle in their walls and also by contraction of surrounding muscles, especially deep veins. You can see this is a venule. So venules are smallest veins into which capillary strain. So size is approximately 20 to 30 microns in diameter. So structure. So it has an endothelium, basal lamina, thin adventitia with longitudinal railing, collagen fibers. So this is the endothelium with basement endothelium resting on the basement membrane <coughs> so thin adventitia longitudinal running collagen fibers so pericytes are present outside basal lamina in most capillary venules some muscle may be present in large venules called as muscular venules so these venules have considerable permeable exchange <coughs> so these venules are considerably permeable uh, exchange takes place between blood and tissues through walls of venules. Lymphocytes and other cells pass out of bloodstream through venules. So nutrition of these blood vessels is by again smaller blood vessels. So if you see in small vessels, it is by diffusion from blood in the lumen. If you see in large blood vessels, there are blood vessels which supply blood vessels. These are called as vasa vasorum. They are present in the adventitia. They supply adventitia and outer layers of media. Coronary arteries are the largest vasa vasorum which supplies the heart. So this adventitia is also having certain additional structures like nervi vasorum which are unmyelinated nerve fibers. They are vasomotor, cause vasoconstriction in arteries and vasodilatation in others. And some myelinated sensory nerves also present in adventitia. You can see, so this is the media. So this is the adventitia, you can see vasa vasorum in the adventitia, you can also see nervi vasorum in the adventitia. Arteriovenous anastomosis, so direct channels communicate small arteries and veins. Wall has thick muscular coat and rich sympathetic nerves. Very little blood passes through capillaries when AV anastomosis are patent. So where they are located, located in skin of nose, lips, finger, tips, external ear, mucous membrane of alimentary canal, nose, thyroid, sympathetic ganglia. You can see here some special type of arteriovenous anastomosis where the connecting channel is S shaped. So this is called as a glomus. Vessels taking part in AV anastomosis, they form round bunch covered by connective tissue. So this glomus have an afferent artery connecting a shaped vessel and afferent vein. So function of AV anastomosis is regulation of body temperature so then if you see heart heart is also like a blood vessel but thickened blood vessels and modified its structure for pumping you can see <coughs> the basic architecture here the innermost layer is the endocardium nothing like acts like endothelium of blood vessels so endothelium resting on thin layer of connective tissue and thick subendocardial connective tissue so then middle layer is the myocardium so which is the cardiac muscle which is already taken in earlier classes. So outer layer is epicardium which is nothing but the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. You can see here this is the lumen of the heart, this is the endocardium, this is the myocardium, this is the pericardial cavity, this is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. So thoroughfare channels, earlier also I told arterioles and venules connected by some channels resembling capillaries but of larger caliber. These channels run a distinct course between arterioles and venules. Isolated smooth muscle cells may present on their walls. So these are the thoroughfare channels. This is the actual capillary bed, but these are the additional channels connecting arterioles and venules called thoroughfare channels. 
so applied aspects is one of the most important vascular diseases in developed countries is the atherosclerosis develops in tunica intima after endothelial injury resulting in atheromatous plaques resulting in myocardial infarction hypertension so blood pressure more than 140 by 90 varicose veins abnormal tortuous dilated superficial veins of lower limbs common but can also occur at other places so angioma benign tumors from cells of vessel wall hemangioma tumor of small blood vessels is of two types capillary hemangioma and cavernous hemangioma glomus tumor ray tumor uh, from glomus body seen under nails fingertip or foot so if you see this is a normal artery with normal lumen so here you can see an atheromatous plaque which is formed after endothelial injury and it is narrowing the lumen leading to if the same thing occurs in coronary vessels it leads to myocardial infarction so force of blood on arterial wall that is the blood pressure so if it is more than 130 or 140 systolic and uh, 80 to 90 of diastolic we call it as hypertension so these are the abnormal tortuous dilated veins superficial veins <coughs> which are called as varicose veins so there will be discoloration of the skin throbbing aching cramping pains itching and skin infections sometimes they also form unhealed varicose ulcers until unless we treat varicose veins that ulcers will not heal so you can see clearly this is the hemangioma you can see the tuft of capillaries growing in the hemangioma so this is also an angioma you can see it's a live lesion on the skin and these are glomus tumors you can see the nail bed glomus tumor thank you